Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and my card is too late for last week's color throw color throwdown challenge. However, I had this stamp set sitting out and just the idea for this card in the back of my head for the longest time and then with the computer crash and just life, everything is not going according to plan. But it just kept bugging me and it was like I needed to make this card to just get it out of the way, you know, to move on to the next thing I think of creating. So I have this W plus nine. This is the Beautiful Bouquets Ranunculas stamp set. This came out a long time. It was a couple of years ago, I think it came out and it was always sold out. It's been so popular and it took me forever to get my hands on it. And then I haven't used it since I finally did get it. <laughs> so I stamped it onto some Nina Desert Storm 100 pound cardstock because I'm kind of obsessed with the Desert Storm cardstock right now. And I used my anti-static powder tool first, and then I inked up the stamp and stamped it with Versamark. And then I'm using Simon Says Stamps Gold Embossing Powder on this. And you could almost just leave it like this. Like, there's something about gold embossing powder on craft that just, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. So I did, when I did this, I was like, ooh, I could leave it. But I really wanted to use the Gonsai Tombi. These are the pearl colors. I've done, I think, one other video with this set. I used the gem colors in a previous video and I really loved it on black. And then I was thinking about using the pearl colors here on the craft and just getting a more subtle look. So like all of their more um, iridescent or pearlescent colors, you need to add water to these and let it kind of soak in and really work it up to start blending together. Like these ones, especially with the metallic-y sort of pigments in them, um, they need to be kind of blended together. So I really work my brush in there to mix it up. And you notice it a lot with the pearl colors and you'll see it here in the video as the water starts soaking into the palettes more and um, the metallic pigments start to settle and the color starts to go solid. So you always kind of need to work it up a little bit, swirl it around on your brush to actually pick up the little like shimmery pigments. So it's not anything extra really. It's just something to be aware of. If you want that little shimmery effect, you definitely need to kind of work it up. So I had sprayed them, worked up the green really, really well. I'm just using this Royal and Langnickel Zen 4 brush here. I'm not using a ton of water because I've shown before you can do this on, I've been like watercoloring on craft cardstock like this. Um, this Nina does a term, it just has a smooth enough finish that it works, but I don't do like a whole lot of blending. I don't use too much water. It's more just applying that pigment and then just leaving it. So I've been doing the same thing here with this coral color. I was a little heavier handed with it, but I'm not going like back and forth, back and forth to really work up that paper because it'll start to warp and pill and tear if you add, you know, too much water and too much back and forth with the brush. But just painting on the color like this, it's fine. It holds up no problem. So I did a little mixing with the white and that coral just to lighten it a little bit, just to add to the other flowers because this color challenge was basically green kind of coral and craft. So I wanted to stick to that and not add any other colors. So I used the pearl white and the little berries of the image and then um, I'm gonna use that color I mixed. And again, you could see like it started, the shimmery pigments were already settling into the acrylic block. So again, you just swirl your brush through it and it just mixes it right back up again. So after I had painted everything, um, I used my heat tool to kind of dry um, all of it because you could see some of those little areas where it wasn't completely dry. So I wanted to make sure it was dry because I wanted to add a few splatters, of course, <laughs> just to really finish this off. So I sped up the drying process with my heat tool and then I just took some of that coral color on the acrylic block and then flicked my paintbrush against that and just added some splatters to this and then I'm going to let them completely dry. And it's another one of those things like it's it looks a lot more subtle on camera because of my lights and everything but it's one of those where you know once the light actually hits it it's got that shimmery look so for the sentiment i am using the w plus nine basic greetings dies the thanks die and i pulled out some lawn fawn guava cardstock because that color seemed to go really well with this kind of coral color of the um gonsai tombi palette so I ran three pieces through my little Xyron sticker maker here. So all these pieces have now adhesive on the back of them. And then I just pulled out my little sidekick and I'm going to die cut all of these with that thanks die. So they're all die cut and they'll all have adhesive on the back of them. 
So run that through my machine and I'm, I'm seriously obsessed with my sidekick and die cutting sentiments with it. It's just perfect. Like the size of it's perfect. It die cuts like a dream. This is just the best. And I showed in my last haul video, like I got an extra pair of cutting plates for this because you can see my base one. Like I'm always flipping it over like back and forth when I'm die cutting with it, but I'm using it a ton. <laughs> So after everything is die cut, I can now remove these from the backing paper and then remove the um, ad paper on the back to expose the adhesive and then stack all three of these together. So I've got three layers of cardstock for this die cut. So it's got that nice, you know, weight and depth to it. So just line everything up. And then once they're all lined up, I can press it down really well and it's good and adhered. And I was originally going to leave it like this, like just, and I could have, um, I really like this color. I just, I love this color and it would look really nice, but I couldn't resist. I was really curious. I was like, I wonder what that coral Gansai Tommy color would look on top of this cardstock. So you can see here as the water soaks into these, it becomes more almost like a paste consistency. So if you don't like that, you can like pick up the color and use it on a, you know, palette or whatever, but it was perfect for this. Cause I just wanted that nice thick consistency to paint all over this die cut and it just made it, you know, shimmery and fabulous. And I just absolutely loved how that turned out. So painted it, let it dry for a little bit. My card base is, I cut it down slightly smaller than an A2 card. It's around four inches wide, roughly. I don't even have exact measurements, but on the main panel, I had used the largest of the W plus nine four bar stitched rectangle dies. So you can kind of see, I was just kind of lining it up and eyeballing it. And I just wanted an even border on the card base itself. So I just trimmed it down with my paper trimmer and I was happy with that. So it's slightly smaller than A2 card, but I would, I'm still going to use an A2 envelope for it. And then I also pulled out this green polka dot pattern paper. And this is from the MFT Itsy Bitsy Polka Dots pack, the solid pack. I used the pastels on a previous video. So I pulled out this green because it kind of went with the green of the leaves. And I just trimmed down to slightly larger than my um, craft cardstock panel here. And I'm going to adhere these together with my little Xyron tape runner. So just applying all that adhesive and then applying that to the pattern paper. And then for my card base, before I adhere that to my card base, I wanted to um, finish the inside. So I'm just going to stamp the sentiment that comes in the beautiful bouquets, ranunculas stamp set. I'm going to stamp that on the inside of the card with the Versamark ink. So I'm going to use my anti-static powder tool and then I'm going to ink up the stamp with the Versamark ink and then I'm going to heat emboss it with that same gold embossing powder. I love this sentiment. I just, the fonts and just everything, it's just so pretty. So I'm going to coat that with the gold embossing powder tap off the excess. And then when I was doing this, I was thinking about inking up the ranunculus stamp with like a pink, like a, like Lawn Fawn's guava ink and stamping it on the inside. But then I remembered that I have these Simon says stamp. I just showed that I got a pack of these khaki wood grain envelopes that I'm obsessed with. And I was like, I wonder if I could stamp the ranunculus on the front of this and heat emboss it with the gold. Cause that would just look fabulous. So if you're you know, a little bit mm, about doing this because it's a textured envelope. I would just use, you know, a stamp position or a misty or a stamp platform or whatever, just to make sure you could stamp it more than once to get a perfect impression. But I was okay with stamping it with an acrylic block and then um, coated it with that gold embossing powder. And then I'm going to melt that with my heat tool. You need to be careful melting this. I wasn't paying attention because the flap on the back of the envelope has adhesive on it. And I nearly melted that <laughs> with my heat tool. So you just got to be aware. Next time I may like open the flap and pay attention to what you're doing. But I was just having fun. And then after I was done heat embossing that onto the envelope, I'm going to funnel that back into my container. And I'm just going to use a Swiffer cloth to remove that excess anti-static powder from the envelope. And then I'm going to adhere my card front to my card base. And then I absolutely had to add these new Studio Cadia um, iridescent cones embellishments. They're kind of, they're very big and chunky, but and I've been like posting pictures of them on social media and just, I raved about them in the release and review video I did. Like they're just, they look like they glow. I, I want to add them to everything. So I pulled those out and just like dumped them right on my um, work surface here because like literally they look like they're glowing. I just love it. So I pulled these out and they're, you can see it better in the picture. They're literally cones, like they're pointed at the top. So very different looking. So I just pulled out three of those and I'm just going to adhere them to my card base with some collage 
medium adhesive from Ranger. So I just squeeze a little bit and then press the little embellishment into that. And that's going to finish off my card today. So as always, I will have a link below the blog post to my video with links to all the supplies used. I will also link to the color challenge. There's gonna be a new one coming up in about a day. There's always a new one every week and it's fun to play along and think outside the box. So I will link to that as well in my blog. So check that out below if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.